Let's get into it real quick. Let's get an example in the scriptures of what we should not do <laughs> concerning our lust. Here we go. Uh, the book of uh, Second, uh, Second Samuel chapter 13 verse 1. A part in our history real quick. In the time of King David. Here we go. Second Samuel chapter 13, three verse one. We're gonna explain exactly how lust was conceived and it brought forth death. All right, read on. Second Samuel 13 verse one. And it came to pass after this, that Absalom, the son of David had a fair sister, verse two. Mm -hmm. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. He fell sick for his sister Tamar. Hmm, why would he fall sick for his sister Tamar? Mm. What would draw him to fall sick for? Was it because she was in trouble? Was she hurt? Was she sick herself? Mm. What would draw him? Let's see this in the scriptures. Come on, read. For she was a virgin. She was a virgin. Okay. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Ham Amnon thought it hard for her, him to do anything, any harm to her. What type of harm are you talking about? Wait a minute now. What's going on, brother? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep reading. Come on. But Amnon had a friend mm -hmm. whose name was Jonadab. This friend, Jonadab, he was an evil friend, all right? Because he basically, and uh, he fueled Amnon's lust even more. We're going to get into it. I don't want to bust the bubble right now, but y'all going to see what um, Amnon dealt with. Read on. The son of Shimei, uh -huh. David's brother, mm -hmm. and Jonadab was a very subtle man. Right. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? So his friend came to him and was like, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking like this from day to day? What's going on with you? Read on. And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's this sister. This ain't like brother sibling love. This was like love, like I want it. Right. I want it. This man had, go back to that real quick that we had in James chapter 1. What was it? Uh, Verse 13. Read verse 14. This is what this brother was dealing with. He was dealing, he, he loved his stepsister Tamar in a lustful manner which was wicked because for one that's his closest of kin which is fornication right and for two he only wanted a woman for lust for sex read that come on james chapter 1 verse 14 read. but every man is tempted mm -hmm. when he is drawn away of his own so you lust know how he was tempted he kept seeing his sister day and night mm -hmm. as she grew as she developed right. as she became a woman she was like dang i gotta have it mm. let's see what job said real quick hold that real quick let's get to job what's that job 31 and 1. job 31 and 1. let's see how job dealt with these things this is what um abnon did not do and what job did and this is how we should all think towards lust all right it's a scarce it's a very scary thing to deal with it. if you play with fire you shall get burnt all right the book of Job, chapter 31, and verse 1. Right. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Job did what? I made a covenant with mine eyes. Job said, with well, my members, because the eye is one of the members that's in your body, one of the, the most important uh, members in your body. Right. He said, uh, I made a covenant with my, I made an agreement with my eyeballs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep right. reading, read on. Why then should I think upon a maid? Why then should I think upon it made? He was saying it in a sense for sex or just lust. Where is that at? Read down. What are we going to jump to? Read verse 9. Here we go. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, mm -hmm. or if I laid wait at my neighbor's door. How would door, his heart be deceived by a woman? Because of Job's lust when he looked at a woman with his eyes. Mm -hmm. Likewise with Amnon. You understand? His lust... His problem was that he wanted his sister for one, mm. and then he wanted his another woman just for sex or lust. Mm. Read that again. What did Job do? Verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. If mine heart had been deceived by a woman. If his heart had been deceived by a woman, the beauty of a woman. Read on. Or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door. Because now, because of the lust, you're plotting on how to do it. This mm -hmm. is what Job is saying. If I've done this, read on. Then let my wife grind unto another. This is the covenant that he made with his eyes. If I look upon another woman. Let another man sleep with my wife. That's what he's saying. Read on. And let others bow down upon her. And let others serve her like I would serve her. <laughs> That's what Job is saying. Mm. If I look upon another woman. That's the same thing Christ said concerning when you look at a woman, it becomes adultery. Let's get to that. Let's get to the proof of that. Go to Matthew 5, verse 27. Very heavy thing when we're dealing with lust. Mm. And Christ, he magnified the law mm. concerning 
uh, adultery. So this should this should, this should uh, a lot of us should be in a hot seat of what y'all viewing, what you're seeing, the things, the people, the conversation that you're around, and you should learn from. It. I'm learning from it. We learning from it. Right. So let's learn together, and that's what we do. We we taking um, heed to the scriptures. We're searching the scriptures. This is what you should and should not be doing. Thus saith the Lord. Read that scripture real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter five, verse twenty-seven. This is what Christ said concerning the eyes. Read. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time mm -hmm. that sh thou shalt not commit adultery. That's the law in Exodus 20, 14. Read it. That's the law of God. Ain't nobody supposed to be sleeping with another woman if you're married, okay? Read on. Or if she's a spouse to somebody else, man and woman. All right, read on. Come on. But I say unto you. But the Lord said unto you. He's going to make it even deeper for you. Read. That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her if you look upon a woman to lust meaning to just for pleasure or have sex after her what do you do read have committed adultery with her already in his heart you committed adultery already in your heart because in your heart you already done played out the sex that you've seen uh, uh that you've lusted another woman for all right mm -hmm. so that's adultery in your mind you've already committed it your actions if it's in your mind it's already conceived Mm. Now your actions is going to bring forth that sin and that sin is going to bring forth death as it said in James mm. chapter 1 verse 14. Now let's go back to that what we had in the book of 2 Samuel. Let's see what happened. 2 Samuel. Oh, 2 Samuel chapter 13 I believe. What do we leave off at verse 4? I uh, believe. Yes verse 4. Alright go ahead. 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 4 right. And he said unto him Why art thou being the king's son Lean from day to day Wilt thou not tell me And Amnon said unto him I love Tamar my brother's, my brother Absalom's sister mm -hmm. And Jonadab said unto him Lay thee down on thy bed So now his friend is helping his um, Lustful thoughts How he should play out his thoughts Read on This is an evil friend right now Y'all gotta realize and understand If y'all got evil friends This what happen You be at the job mm -hmm. Your your so called friend or coworker Will show you this Nah you gotta stand up And be like Nah don't show me that stuff Sisters too mm -hmm. Alright Every, everybody, all right. Whatever lust you dealing with, let's do this deal. Let's hit this lick, bro. Let's right. do this robbery. Let's do this. That's when an evil friend will come to you to get you out of your lust that you already have mm. to get whatever you need or lack, and they 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 instruct you on how to do things in an evil manner. That's not a real friend, all right. Like this brother right here, he ain't no real friend. Read on. Come on. And make thyself sick. So his friend said. Abnon, make yourself sick. Read. And when thy father cometh to see thee. And then when David, your father, come to see you. What? Read on. Say unto him. Say unto him. Come on. I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat. So he's giving him wicked advice on how to get his father to let his sister, his stepsister, come into his chamber. Mm. All right. To fulfill his lust. Read on. Come on. Which is, which in all in all, what he's doing, he's plotting. This is why all of this is evil. He's plotting to fulfill that evil that's within him. Right. Read on, come on. And dress the meat in my sight. All right. That I may see it and eat it at her hand. Mm -hmm. So Amnon lay down and made himself now, sick. What little sister wouldn't care for their brother? Right. That's the evil that he's conceiving. So mm -hmm. he's like, surely my father David is going to bring forth my sister Tamar into my chambers. Right. And she's going to take her time. While she's taking my time, I'm going to be looking at her while she's getting the food ready. And then guess what? After that, she's going to feed me by my mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the advice this evil dude is giving to uh, Amnon. Read on, come on. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And so Amnon laid down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight. I pray thee, he begged his father, send my sister to come serve me food. Because I'm sick, dad. He's faking the funk. Read on, come on. That I may eat out of her hand. Mm -hmm. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying. And he did exactly what his son asked. Read, come on. Go now to thy brother Amnon's house right. and dress him meat. Mm -hmm. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house. And he was laid down, right. and she took flour and netted it, and made cakes in his sight, mm -hmm. and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan. Hey, and this is also showing. It's a side note. This is also showing you that women cook. Mm -hmm. She was the princess. She was the daughter of the king David at this time. Right. She knew how to cook. She knew how to throw down. Mm -hmm. It's a side note. 
Read on. You sisters need to cook. <laughs> Read on. Come on. Verse 9. And she took a pan mm -hmm. and poured them out before him. Right. But he refused to eat. And Amnon said, have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. So every man that was in this chamber went out from him. And it was just him and his sister. Mm -hmm. oh, I wonder what's going to happen. They're going to talk about the good times when they used to celebrate the Passover. Huh? Right. <laughs> Come on, keep going. <laughs> and Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber. Right. That I may eat of thine hand. Come on in, sister. Bring the meat so I can eat it at your hand. Serve me. Because I'm so sick. I'm faking that I'm so sick that I can't even feed myself. Mm -hmm. Read on. Come on. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made. And she did what her brother asked, read. And brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. Mm -hmm. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. He said, what? Come lie with me. My sister. So that was the fulfillment of the lust that he had. He wanted to get his sister in the room chamber alone, plotting mm -hmm. secretly to have sex with her. All right? That's sin. It says, when uh, lust have can sin, let no man. Let's get back to that real quick. Back in James. We're going to use that a lot. Because that's what happens. No man can't blame nobody or God, nobody on earth, nowhere of their own lust. You can only blame yourself. And then you try to act out the lust that you have. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But every man is tempted. He was tempted by the sight of his eyes, by the, what he saw in his eyes. Uh, looking at his sister for sex, lust. Read on. When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. It says he was drawn away of his own lust. The scriptures, nobody can. If God came down and struck lightning on the ground, he still won't see the signs. Mm -hmm. All right. He's drawn away of his own lust. He don't want to hear nothing. Of his own lust, read on. Then when lust hath conceived, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth sin. What was his lust that he had that was conceived? I want to have sex with my sister. That's what Amnon was thinking. Read back, go back to that real quick. That part where we left off at. 2 Samuel 13. This is just one of the many examples of lust. The most common we're dealing with is the lust of sex. All right? Other, other forms of lust are written in these scriptures, all right? Covetousness of money, you, be, you read many examples of that. Read on. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. Mm -hmm. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such well, thing. She said, No, this is wicked, my brother. My brother, we have different mothers, but the same father, my brother. Right. All right. He says, do not what? She said, what? Do not force me. Do not rape me. Rape is against God and his commandments. It's a sin. And the wages of sin is death. Rape is against the Bible. Read that again. And she answered him, nay, my brother, do not force me. Do not force me. Read. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. This is against our commandments. This is against God's commandments. Right. It's not to be done in Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Read. Come on. Do not thou this folly. Don't do this sin. That's what that word translates to. Folly. Foolishness. All right. Forwardness. Read. Come on. Verse 13. Uh -huh. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And where am I supposed to go? Because I'm your, bro I'm your sister. Where am I going to cause my shame to go? I'm going to be like a whore in Israel. Read on. And as for thee, and as for you, being the son of the king, read, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. See, you'll let your lust drive you so bad that you'll become a fool amongst your people, amongst the world. Mm. You'll let lust drive you that bad, you'll become a fool upon the planet. Read on. Now, therefore, I pray thee, mm -hmm. speak unto the king. But he will not withhold me from thee. Now this right here, she was just trying to get out of the situation. Anybody would have got out and try to say whatever she could have to get out of the situation of being forced to be uh, forced or raped. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was trying to say whatever she could to get out of the situation. Read on. Verse 14. Uh -huh. How be it? He would not hearken unto her voice. How be it? He didn't hear nothing. That's why it says what? Read that back in James. What we was reading again. I'm going to go back and forth to it, but, <laughs> hey, the scriptures, this is a real book. This is what people, our people deal with. They deal with things like this. The premeditation of the sin of lust. What did it say? Uh, uh, verse 14. Read that again. James chapter 1, verse 14. Right. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. He was drawn away of his own lust because the scripture right here in 2 um, Samuel chapter 13, verse... 14 it says how be it 
he would not hearken unto my voice. He was drawn away of his own lust. So nothing she said would stop him from the actions that he wanted to fulfill. Mm -hmm. Read on. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. Mm -hmm. How be it? He would not hearken unto her voice. Right. But being stronger than she. But being stronger than she, he used his strength. What did he do? Forced her. He forced her. He, he, he forcibly laid her down. Read on and did what? And laid with her. And raped her. That's what it said. So, your sin of lust will cause this man, the sin of lust, cause this man to be enticed with his eyes. And then, and all bring forth death to the nation, which is he raped his sister. Mm. Death, rape is um, death. Is sin. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's as equal as the sin of death. Killing somebody. Read on. Come on. Verse 15. Right. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. Then after the sex, he mm. hated her. <laughs> Read. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. Because it was all just for sex. It was just for pleasure. After he had, and that happens a lot in our nation. You right. brothers that hit it and quit it, get a woman pregnant and just leave. Because you done fulfilled the lust that you had. You done got your rocks off. Mm. Now you leave the woman for not. Yeah, she's pregnant. Calling you nine months or six months later, she's pregnant. And mm. you say, so what? I don't got nothing to do with that. That's mm. you. Damn. That happens a lot amongst our nation. Mm. And we stopping it with the spirit of the Lord as Israel and the faith of Christ. You understand? We stopping it. Thus saith the Lord. So you learn. The things that are written aforetime. time were written for our learning. You learn from this evil example written in the scriptures to not do, mm. plain and simple. Read that, read, it, read that again, verse 15. Verse 15. Uh -huh. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly even the more. More than the love that he had for her, he hated her more than the love he had for her. Read on. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her right. was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. Read on. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. He said, I'm done. Get out of here. Evil. Evil. Read on. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. So now she's saying, You've done, you've humbled me. You don't even want to take care of me. As the law says, if you lay down with him to to uh have uh, sex with him, you have to uh betroth him to be his wife. Now you don't even want to make uh, me to be your wife alright which would have been even more shameful because they were brother and sister but now this evil that he has put her out is even greater than everything else he did before that mm. this all came from the conception of lust mm. and he was enticed by his own actions and his thoughts to bring forth death the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 12 mm -hmm. let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body Mm -hmm. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Because before the uh, before the sin comes forth the lust. All right. It says, "Don't let that sin reign therefore in your mortal bodies, that ye obey the lust thereof." Because all sin comes from the spirit of lust. All right. Sin of being covetousness comes from the love of money, the lust of money. Right. All right. The things that are in the world. You want it so bad. That you'll sin to do it. You'll do anything to get it. All right. Read on. Verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto there, sin. There goes the Bible, uh, the Bible saying it again. Speaking of your members, your thoughts, your eyes, your hands, your actions. You're doing the action of you fulfilling the lust. The Bible says, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. All right. Don't do that. You're not supposed to be doing that. Thus saith the Lord. So this is for you to focus on and hone down on to what you need to be paying attention to in your body. If I see something, you're supposed to look at it to look away from it. All right. Not look and entice and uh, feed that lust even more. All right. You're supposed to look personally. I look to look away because I see it's there. OK, I ain't going to look no more. All right. And that happens a lot. A lot of us don't know how to look to look away or we don't know. We don't know how to, to reject this. Um, the, the conceitfulness of the lust that we have. All right. Read on. Come on. But yield yourselves unto God. But yield yourselves unto who? Unto God. But yield yourselves unto God, which is what? Acknowledging his grace that he have on you to get yourself right, which is what grace is denying ungodliness that you may be sober minded. That you may be righteous and godly in this present life. Read on. As though, as those 
that are alive from the dead mm -hmm. and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Right. So we die daily. You're supposed to die daily. You're supposed to every single day of your life. You're supposed to mortify your members, subdue your members every single day. Read verse 14. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Because if you're godly, the Bible said what? Read that again. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Because you'll let your lust or sin have dominion over your everyday life. And we can't live a life like that. Well, everything you're doing, you're asking yourself, how am I going to get rich? And if I don't get rich, I'm going to die trying to get rich. Mm. Which means you'll, rape, you'll rob your people, mm. you'll sell them drugs, you'll do whatever you can to get that dollar. You do everything you can to fulfill that lust that you have of riding around in a Bentley, off dirty money. Mm. All right? Off of, you do anything you can to sleep with your, uh, your neighbor's wife. All right. And many of our music, our songs, what it is filled with? What is it filled with? How to commit adultery. How another man will tell you while you listen to it in your speakers, how he'll sex your girl better than you can. And you listen to it. And you're wondering why adultery is going on in your household. Keep reading real quick. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. We're under grace. We're not under the laws right here speaking about the laws of sacrifice, which didn't bring no resolve. Mm -hmm. We're under the spirit of grace, which is you keeping God's commandments, acknowledging what you're supposed to be doing. Now the Lord give you a time period to get it right. We owe God righteousness, plain and simple. Right. Here we go. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Get that. And then I'm going to get Titus chapter 3 verse 3 Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 3 mm -hmm. among whom also we all had our conversation in times past right. in the lust of our flesh read that again from the top hold it and read it come on Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 right among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. Now we're dealing with another side of it, which is your conversation. How is lust introduced in your conversation? Because sometimes with your conversation, you entertain that spirit of lust in your speech. Read it again from the top. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past. Mm -hmm. In the lust of our flesh. In the lust of our flesh. Because only after you look it in your eyes, now you're speaking of the lust that you want to do. You're looking at something, oh man, yeah, she got it good. I want, it. I want that. And then you have other people influencing you on top of that. What you have to do is get away. Flee from that sin that's from the face of a snake, of a serpent. Mm -hmm. All right? You have to shut your mouth and don't speak on them type of things if it's evil like that. All right? And turn that which is evil to good. That's what you have to try to meditate and mortify and subdue your ways and your actions and your speech. It goes into everything that you do. Mortify your members. All right? Read on. Control your actions and your speech. Read on. Come on. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So, because the things that you say, you, you're, you're, you're premeditating what you want to fulfill in your mind and your desires. All right? And your desires. What is lust? I'm going to the definition of lust for you right here. Lust is when you fulfill that desire, that sexual desire, that internal desire that you have. Mm -hmm. That's what the, um, the definition of lust is. When you do anything you can to fulfill that desire that you have, that you lack, that you crave. Read on. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Mm -hmm. The children of wrath. How we used to live when we celebrated Christmas mm -hmm. and Thanksgiving and Halloween and Easter and all those false holidays. The children of wrath, they go by and they subdue their ways to the lust of the world. Not you brothers and sisters that know that you Israel. Right. Is that it? That's it on that. Go to uh, Titus chapter 3 verse 3. We're going to keep saying it. At one time we were in that same atmosphere but we knew how to get out of that spirit and meditate and study and search the scriptures and find out how to be godly. So we, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to learn from our examples that we're using in the scriptures. All right? Go to the Bible. And then we know that we have eternal life in them.
working so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.